And that allow me to get into this uh, bottom drawer here. And then you've got to do a little bit more digging. And you see this thing here, which doesn't look too interesting, right? It looks pretty boring. But if you pull it out and you open it up. Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the primetime treasure hunter. Welcome back to another video. It's about 8.30 in the morning on a Saturday and I'm taking Daisy out right now, getting ready to go out to an estate sale. This place looks like it's gonna be amazing. It's actually titled Amazing Estate Sale in the ad. The house was built in 1847. The pictures look like there is just ton of vintage stuff there. So I'm super excited. Let me show you the boxes that I have prepared to go there. And I'm hoping that we could load them up, but we'll see what happens. You never know till you get there, but uh, I'm hoping this will be an exciting treasure hunt. Let's take a look. So this is $250 worth of eBay sales yesterday. There's a post office that I'm gonna stop off along the way. This estate sale is about five minutes from Primetime Treasure headquarters. So everything is very convenient today. It works out perfectly. I'm dropping my daughter right off to marching band practice right now. So everything works out just great. Now, over here, what you're gonna see is I've actually brought uh, really three big boxes. Now this is the one I'm gonna bring into the sale. I wanna be prepared. And you can see inside I don't have a very small box. I actually have a pretty big box right inside of here. So I'm gonna fill this one up first and then I could just take it out and then fill this one up. So it's like two boxes in one. And um, you know, if I need another one, I'm bringing this just in case. Now, who knows? I may only fill up this one, but I wanna have options available to me. I don't wanna get stuck having a bunch of items that I need to carry around with me and not having a way to do so. I have a little bag in there and also have uh, my bag of tools. So uh, let's get over there and uh, see what this sale is all about. This seriously could be the line for the estate sale. It's crazy. Uh, like I said, the house was built in 1847 and there's no sign of the ownership changing. In fact, uh, here it comes. So I think there's gonna be a lot of original uh, stuff in there that could be, you know, 100 years old or more. Uh, 69 right over here. So it's like this White House right here. We're gonna be picking in the White House. <laughs> so let's go find a spot. There's everyone lined up and uh, let's get over there. And speaking of White Houses, this is another White House in the area that I absolutely love and I just wanted to get it on camera to share it with you. But let's get over to the White House that uh, we're gonna go pick at today. It is exactly nine o'clock, so we have got to get over there and uh, get inside to this sale. Decisions, decisions. Could go through the garage first um, or the house. So we're in the garage because they are still handing out numbers to get inside of the house. And so I was digging through uh, this area here. I always say you gotta dig through uh, the boxes and stuff. And there's some interesting old uh, religious uh, books, paper items. So this magic pad right here, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got this uh, Today in God's World uh, coloring book. So these are all nice vintage items from like the 60s and 70s. Nothing in here has been colored uh, whatsoever. So really neat uh, to see something like that here, uh, just tucked in underneath all of this. Here's a nice little uh, puzzle book. So this is cool as well. It's all religious based uh, puzzles. So I think that's an interesting item. I can make a nice little lot out of these. And uh, here is a cool uh, 1976 religious calendar and uh, nothing in here has been marked at all. So these are cool items. I'm gonna pick these all up, just put them in the box and uh, get on moving to some other items. So I like to pick these up too. These are these vintage insect uh, sprayers. They're really cool. They have the old advertising on them. I have another one of these I could show you as well with a different company. So I could actually make a little lot out of them. So I'm gonna pick this one up as well. 
So once again, it's important to make sure you look behind stuff. So I just pulled this out. And if you look behind here, you're gonna see this Valiant electric water heater and you just have to take it out of the box and I'll show you uh, what it looks like here. It's a little water heater. It's a nice uh, vintage piece. It has the lid intact. There's no damage to it. Uh, comes with the original box. There is the uh, area that you would plug in and inside uh, you could see here we have the plug. So there's one right now going for uh, 30. So I'm gonna pick this one up cause they're just gonna give it to me for like a buck or so. So uh, again, one of these uh, no brainer items to pick up. Really cool piece. Make sure you're looking behind stuff. This really feels like an American Pickers episode, doesn't it? <laughs> Twenty thousand uh, yeah, dollars for this like, car. That's a little price. Yeah, I mean, my goodness, but uh, it's pretty neat. I mean, I'm just going to show the whole thing here. It's got the uh, pullover top and everything. It's pretty neat. It is beat up. I mean, it really needs a lot of work. My goodness. Yeah, I don't do anything with this stuff, but uh, pretty cool to see something like this just hanging out in the garage. So a guy just walked by here and he said, there's nothing here, uh, but I beg to differ because I look through here and what I see is a bunch of shipping supplies that I could use for my reselling business. And these are the ones that have the bubble wrap inside and the nice big ones. So these cost a lot of money if you're gonna start investing in these, uh, you know, like on Amazon or Staples. So if you get them at estate sales like this, I mean, look how many there are. Uh, these are gonna basically be throwing items. So you're, you're not gonna really uh, pay anything uh, for these. And there's a bunch more of them in here too. So this is the whole stack that I pulled out of here and uh, just gonna toss them right in the box. Okay, so you see all that stuff right there? That was right over <laughs> yeah, right. here and it was a barrier. Everyone was walking by it. Uh, but I pushed everything over here to the side and then that allowed me to get into this uh, bottom drawer here. And then you've got to do a little bit more digging and you see this thing here, which doesn't look too interesting, right? It looks pretty boring. But if you pull it out and you open it up, you see all of these uh, vintage safety pins inside. And believe it or not, uh, things like this, like this Clinton uh, pack of brass rust proof safety pins, they actually go for good money online. And I've got this entire lot of them here. And so I'm gonna take these uh, and the thimbles and I'm just gonna put them right here in the box and they're not gonna cost much at all. Uh, they're not even really probably gonna factor them in too much into the price because they're gonna think of them as, you know, pretty worthless items, but they're really not. So so really cool uh, set of items here. It just goes to show you've got to move obstacles and you have got to dig around. All right, let's get these all in the box. And last but not least, let's not forget the thimbles. And we've got crochet hooks here. And this box has thinner crochet hooks inside and it's cool whenever you could have the original uh, vintage box like this, it's pretty neat. So, you know, I could just throw these two in at their different size, clean them up a little bit, it will be good to go. All right, the box is filling up. You can see why I use this two box system. Anyone want a boat? <laughs> I don't, but I will take a peek in there and see if there's anything uh, interesting to grab. All right, I had to walk around the other side of the boat to get through here, and uh, this is why I've got to stay in shape because there's just no way I'd be able to get through these narrow uh, passages. So I've got to kind of turn and get through here and walk to the end and see if there's anything and peek into this boat. Nah, no luck. Doesn't look like there's anything in here. Uh, all right, it was worth a peek. All right, we're done in the garage. Now we've got to wait online to get inside of the house.
Well, I just got my number and uh, I'm kind of concerned. Number 13. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna find anything when I get in there now. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you a common error that people will make. So this is the door that I walk through from the outside, and what everyone will do is just look straight ahead and walk that way, and not look behind them. And that's what you have to do. You have to do a systematic approach because these just sold recently for about a hundred and these two have sold uh, very well also even pre-owned these uh, Merrill Brindle boots so you know 60 bucks or more uh, some of these have sold for so I am going to uh, pick these up they just need to be uh, cleaned up it's just dust not a problem and I'm uh, gonna put them in the box just talking about looking on top for things but if you're treasure hunting you also have to get down and look on the bottom sometimes for things and uh, this is a good example right under here you'll see there are some Nike orange flip-flops they just need to be cleaned up a little bit and uh, these will be good to go they won't sell for a ton of money maybe like 20 30 bucks or something like that but uh, still a worthy pickup no price on it it's just gonna cost like a buck or two for these Always look on walls as well. This is a Dalla horse. It's of Swedish origin. It's a nice uh, tapestry. I'm gonna definitely pick this one up as well. Still has a tag on it too. Don't pass up kitchen areas. Uh, this is a nice uh, item here. This uh, Earl Grey tea holder. People like Earl Grey tea. So uh, something like this may be able to get 20 out of. So. I'm going to take this nice ceramic item. It'll still go first class. This is what I get for getting number 13 before. Kitchen witch. <laughs> Don't pass these up. These are great collectible items. Love them. So this is another nice Swedish item here. It's this uh, candle holder. There is one up right now for 21 on eBay, but uh, this one actually has the tags on it, unlike the one that I'm comping it to and does not have the uh, candles. So I'm gonna pick this one up as well. So these are cool here, these little miniatures, uh, the salt and pepper shakers. They're pretty neat, they're not worth a lot of money, but uh, I'm gonna pick them up regardless. I just like them. People tend to like miniature food items. So just gonna add these to the box. All right, done with the kitchen. Time to move on to some other spots. This is our next area to look through. There's a bunch of stuff here. See if any of it's good. Okay, so this is a box of postcards. I am gonna sift through them, get rid of these modern ones and just focus on uh, more of the vintage uh, postcards that look like this and just separate them out real quick. All right, well, this stack here is already pretty vintage. So I'm just gonna grab this entire stack. Uh, this is pretty neat. This one is filled with uh, American Indian ones. There's just a lot of neat ones here. So. This one I could just grab, and then if there's stacks of modern ones, I'll put those to the side. This one's for Don, the auction professor. I think he'd really like this one, the Howard Johnson's ice cream one. It's just cool. Uh, you know, it's got two types of advertising. It's not only for ice cream collectors, but also for Howard Johnson. So it may not be worth a ton, but it's still uh, a cool vintage postcard there. It says from Maine to Florida, so I like it. All right, so I'm gonna shout out Kevin, the postcard guy, and John from Popeye's postcards on these. These are some real photo uh, postcards. Uh, you could even see it says it on the back, photo postcards. So uh, pretty neat to see those. There's uh, Mickey Mouse, so Don might like this one as well. It's a nice vintage one. Has some writing on the back of it as well. So uh, cool piece. There's some cool things in this postcard box if you just take your time and look through it. This is a cool, uh, old Archie record, uh, 33 and a third. Look at that, that's pretty neat. So uh, I'm gonna throw this in as well. So this is everything that I pulled out here, this stack of vintage postcards. And something that I found in digging through the box that was pretty interesting are these vintage emblems. So there's all different states here. It's really cool. 
It's a Pennsylvania right here. We've got uh, West Virginia. We've got St. Petersburg, so some states, uh, Virginia. There's some really neat ones here. Uh, I could either lot these together or I could uh, try to sell them individually. But you could see here, these are nice and old ones here. Great Smokies. We've got the Grand Canyon. Pretty neat. Alaska as well. Got a Mount McKinley. There's also some nice vintage uh, postcards from Holiday Inn from different cities. So I found those as well. There's some anthropomorphic uh, rabbits. I know I'm gonna hear it. I said anthropomorphic. It's anthropomorphic or something like that. But uh, anyway, these are cool. There's another one right there. So if you remember that plastic bag I showed you earlier in my box, this is one of the reasons I carry that around with me because now I could just easily fit this into the big box here as opposed to having to put them loose or carry them around in this you know, big awkward shoe box. So you have to think these things through in terms of prepping for mobility with the treasure hunt and stacking things when you have a big house like this to go through. It's another vintage Disney item right here, so pick this one up as well. Nice little bumper sticker. Okay, so I always say to look for Walkman, and this is no exception. This is a GE one. They're almost always sitting around at these sales without batteries in them, so I did put the batteries in them right there. I have the lid right over there, but uh, you could see here that just pressing the different buttons, it lights up, it works, it's rewinding, it's playing, and it also stops it. So this is good. I'm going to pick this up. I put the tape in there myself. So uh, keep these around with you with batteries so you could test them out when you're at the sales. Okay, so always check inside these drawers as well. Uh, most people probably just saw this as some boring design here. But if you flip it over, you see that it's a key for the MGM Grand Hotel. It has a number on it. Individual keys like this have sold for over $20. So it's a good key to pick up. Another good thing about drawers often find so coins personal. in them it feels so personal including foreign coins sometimes wow. so pretty neat just pick that up i ain't even been thinking about that oh yeah thought you'd all get a kick out of these old vintage priority mail envelopes that's what they used to look like back in the day All glass stuff that I really stay away from just for shipping reasons. Sometimes I'll get some glass pieces, but. Nope, not a whole box of them, just one, but I'll take it. So again, always look on the bottom of things and in corners of these types of drawers or cabinets because you might think that it's all construction paper, but it's not. There's vintage highlight magazines here from 1970. This whole stack and they're in amazing condition. I'm going to get this entire stack. It is crazy.
Time to head upstairs with a brand new box. That's why I carry two around with me. It's a long way down. Gotta watch your step around here. Very nice up here. So we got a room here to look at and some rooms in here as well. So these are Vince Camuto boots right here. They're pretty neat. Uh, they are new in the box. They still have the uh, tissue paper uh, in some of them. So they haven't been worn. Uh, brand new, maybe max 45, 50, but for five bucks, I'll definitely pick them up. Eh, it's the dreaded old granny clothes closet. So not much we could do here with these. The other room doesn't look to be much here and there's no basement. So we are going to be heading out of here soon. Um, this one's been pretty ransacked too. So looks like uh, most of the good stuff was downstairs where we started off. So that was good. So check this out. This is what I love about these old houses. So you think that, you know, it's just this room there. looks like a bathroom and then that room we were just in. But when you walk in through here, Check this out, it's like a maze. There's more rooms back there. <laughs> this is a vintage coffee grinder. Don't spend 30 bucks for them though. Max like five bucks. And that is the scary steep other way down the stairs that we are not taking. <laughs> Okay, so this is the room to the left, and uh, I'll look around here, see if I find anything interesting to pick up. Uh, actually, right over here, I could see there are some of these paperback uh, books that I like to get. These ones with the comic strips in them, so we've got Dennis the Menace. I've got a bunch of these at home that I could add uh, to, so make little lots. And then there's some Charlie Brown ones here as well, some Peanuts ones. So I'll look through there. I see Marmaduke as well. So uh, BC, I've got a bunch of BCs at home, although that one's damaged up top. But I'll just go through these and uh, pick some of them out. Okay, so this is the last room to look at. I did get a few of the paperback books, as you can see here. I got uh, a couple of the Dennis the Menace and this uh, one Charlie Brown Peanuts book. The other ones were damaged. So we'll just look around here and then we'll go check out. And back down we go to check out. All right, all checked out. This entire box of estate contents, which is completely filled, got everything for $30, as you can see right there. So uh, really, really made out with this selection. I am super excited about this. So let's head back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters. Daisy! Hey, what's going on? Look at the dance. Look at that Daisy dance. What is going on? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Look how excited you are. Your eyes are glowing because I still have the flash on. What's up, Daisy? What's going on? How are you? You want to go outside? All right, let's go. Let's go, Daisy. All right, so we are back, and that really was a lot of fun today, picking through that old house and the garage outside. And I want to just tell you a little bit of behind-the-scenes information uh, to explain some of the things that you saw today. So uh, when I got there, I had a choice to make. I could either stand outside and wait in line to go into the house, and all those people were lined up out there. Uh, there was a number system, so they were giving you a number on a card, and then you would just have to wait your number. Well, when the sale started, there were a lot of people waiting on that line. So if I stood there and waited uh, in line and I was towards the end of it, then the problem would be everyone would be going into the garage, which they opened up. And there you didn't need a number. You could just walk right in there without a number. And a lot of estate sales will do that. If you go to enough estate sales, you'll see this where there is a detached garage. And sometimes once in a while, if there's a packed regular garage, they'll sometimes do it as well. They do that for crowd control inside the house. Uh, they don't want there to be any kind of fire hazard situation where they exceed you know, the allowed occupancy inside. So to disperse the crowd more, they will just let people go 
into these external structures. Sometimes there might even be a barn outside that they'll let you go into. So I decided to go there first. I'm glad I went there. I found a lot of cool things. One of the cool treasures that I found, and remember, you are treasure hunting. So to do that effectively, you've got to dig, you've got to move things aside, and um, you've got to look inside things that look boring. Sometimes those boring cases have the best stuff inside. Because think about it. If you want to hide something that's pretty cool, do you want to put it in a shiny box that says treasure on the outside of it? Or do you want to put it in something that looks pretty nondescript? And uh, so that was uh, these right here, all these uh, safety pin uh, sets. You remember those? Uh, these are really cool. These particular ones that I pulled out here are brass ones. And if you look up the comps on these, these go for like 12 bucks a piece. And there were a ton of them in there. So I was really excited for that. Uh, then there was this duster that you saw me uh, pick up. So you just kind of spray chemicals with it. It has the old uh, advertising on it. They don't go for a fortune. Like you might be able to get like 20 bucks out of one of these, but I told you I had another one of them. And I had this one that I got in an estate sell at a barn and I have been meaning to list this for the longest time and you know what now that I have both of these I'm either gonna lot them together or put them up separately and so uh, it was just good to find those and actually they're both red so maybe they'll go together as like a red lot or something like that who knows uh, and then uh, the last thing that I want to uh, show you and it really was uh, a highlight of the day were the highlights magazines get it it was a highlight of the day that I found the highlights magazines. Remember, what you don't you don't think that you don't think that's funny, Petey? You don't? No, I thought that was funny. I thought that would be a funny joke for everybody. What? No, don't don't hit me again. He keeps. <laughs> Will you stop hitting me every time I say something that you don't like? All right, go go, go help out Pink Panther or something. I don't know. Go, there's some bubble wrap over there. Go put the bubble wrap away. All right, see you later. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, uh, so, but they really were a highlight. And uh, I'll show you uh, this right here. This is actually a complete year. And that's what you're really looking for. That's what collectors want. For magazine titles in general, if you could find complete years for vintage magazines, those are really good selling points. And I'm going to sell this one off as a year for 1972. And if you have a complete uh, old set of a year of highlight magazines, those will go for around 80 bucks. So not only do I have those, I have 1971. And this is near complete. There's one month missing, uh, September. And if you haven't seen these before, I remember seeing them as a kid, and uh, many of you who are watching this probably remember seeing these as well at dentist office. For some reason, they must have given the best deals for these highlights magazines at dentist office. If you've never seen them before, they have like little stories and activity books inside and I did check these before I purchased them to make sure there wasn't like a bunch of writing or ripped pages inside uh, but the important thing I want to tell you about these not just sh uh, showing you the actual magazines and I'll just keep flipping through it as I talk a little bit is where did I find these right you had to squat down and there was a bunch of stuff on top of it that you know would make the entire uh, area of that shelf look like it was just construction paper and uh, just boring art stuff that wasn't worth anything. But you have to keep looking, you have to keep digging, and a lot of times I've shown you at these estate sales that that's where you'll find a lot of valuable things is you gotta move the stuff on top and just go look. It's not gonna always pop out of you. There was no way to know that there were Highlights magazines unless you did some digging and you did some exploration. So I hope that's a tip that uh, a lot of you get from this, if, especially if you're new to my channel, is you really gotta put the work in, you gotta put in the effort to find the treasure sometimes. They're not always gonna be uh, out and uh, about just ready for you to uh, grab. And that's how I could go into that entire garage, by the way, and come in in the house afterwards and find all of these things. And this is why, by the way, I'm not worried about what other people are doing because most people are just not gonna put the time and the effort in to do all of this digging because it does require effort, it does require work, and people just get overwhelmed easily. And, uh, you know, I just take a very systematic approach. I 
you know, hit up that garage, went through the whole garage bit by bit, then came out and just went room by room by room. It's a very systematic operation. I don't run around like a chicken with my head cut off, you know, going to this room and that room and that room and trying to find some treasure that I might miss. Just extract every bit of treasure you could find from one room, then move on to the next. And uh, this is the entire stack of highlights magazines. It's crazy. I got everything for $30, just a cassette player that I showed you would sell for $30. So uh, this is just amazing. You know, this is a what we call a pick and pull estate sale. Whenever I see one of them advertised, I am on it. I had the whole day blocked off or morning and afternoon blocked off to go to this uh, pick and pull because that's exactly what happens. And the estate sale dealers, I was talking to the guy, you know, he was telling me, he's like, normally we don't do these types of sales. He's like, you know, we go through everything in advance and we price every item. And even when he does that, that guy is pretty fair, and that's another reason why I went there. I've had a good uh, working relationship with him in the past, but for pick and pull, they are overwhelmed, and what they're just looking to do is just get it out. Get it out. Just get it out. They got to decrease the bulk. So that's why they, when you go to checkout, by the way, you saw that big box I brought up. Do you think they're going to go through every single item and give a price on all of them? No. This is the advantage, again, of bulk buying. When they see that, they just go, you know what? Um, how about $30 for everything? And that's exactly literally what happened. So that's how I got everything for $30. Now, uh, one other thing I want to tell you about that was uh, funny. Uh, so I'm in the garage in the beginning. I'm standing there and a uh, nice uh, gentleman comes up uh, from behind me with his wife. He's from uh, Moravia. I don't want to mention his name because he didn't say I could mention his name here. So I want to do that. But uh, he said, uh, so... Uh, famous YouTuber here and uh, looked around. I just, you know, I played dumb. I was just like, yo, who? I don't know who, who you're talking about. And he goes, you're Dominic, the primetime treasure hunter. I don't know the guy. And uh, I said, oh yeah. He's like, I like to watch you and uh, Don, the auction professor. And uh, we were just talking, cracking up. And uh, he does this as a hobby. And he actually drove an hour away to come uh, to this sale. It was actually billed as amazing estate sale. So we saw each other from time to time. He had a lot of fun. I know he's probably watching this with his wife. I uh, look like nice people. I'm sure I'll see him around at some other sales. So thanks for coming up to me. I appreciate it. This has started to actually happen uh, once in a while now and with more frequency where I'm starting to be noticed when I go out to sales. So I don't know how that's going to play out in the future. So it hasn't happened with any of the estate sale dealers yet, but uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's just part of putting yourself on YouTube, right? So uh, that's pretty much it uh, for everything. I really had a fun day today. There's another estate sale I plan to hit up tomorrow, so it should be a lot more uh, treasures along the way. But I got to wrap this one up. I got to uh, talk to Mrs. Primetime and catch up with her and show her the treasures that I found. She's excited to see them. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please tell other people about the channel. I'm really trying to get this up to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I'm not sure if we're going to pull it off or not. We're getting closer, but uh, we'll have to see. We're getting to almost about two months left to hit that goal. So again, please share it to other people. Uh, share the video, share the channel, let them know. Uh, again, there's over 500 videos here to help you out. Uh, with your reselling business. Uh, make sure that you come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and also come to my Instagram account. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you back at the next video, everyone. Take care.